Hey everyone, welcome to this video in which I'll be showing you first look at null coalescing and optional chaining operator in JavaScript. So VS Code just got shipped with latest version of TypeScript, which is TypeScript 3.7.2 and TypeScript 3.7.2 supports null coalescing and optional chaining syntax out of the box for TypeScript files. Now, what does that mean? That means that basically I can just go ahead and create an object saying like I have prop1 as value1, prop2 as value, maybe this is an object, right? Nested1 as you no know, 10. So if I have an object like this, and if I go ahead and console log object dot prop1, well, you're going to see I get value1 nice and easy. What if I go ahead and do prop2 dot value, right? So now you can see obviously that TypeScript immediately complains us that value does not exist because it knows that this is basically the shape of the object and by static analysis it can detect that this property does not exist on this. So what we could do is we can just, you know, json.stringify this, right? And we can just, you know, json.parse this again. And there we go. So we just stringify this and parse it again so that TypeScript does not know the shape of our data, right? So now if we do value, we can see that it's undefined, right? So because this key does not exist. And I can just, you know, try to access some other object as well if I want. So once we do that, you're going to see that it says we cannot read property some other of undefined. And a lot of times what we do is that we have an object which has a shape something like this. So we have a shape where we have user and, you know, name is, uh, you know, maybe not even user like system and then user the name is Mehul and oops, age is 21, stuff like this. So now if we go ahead and do object dot system, a lot of times you have to do thing like object dot system and then object dot system dot user and then object dot system dot user dot name, right? So in this case, it returns me mail, but you see that the code is very, very early. So what, what the optional chaining syntax allows us to do is just reduce this down to this thing, that is just object system username. Well, obviously it works just fine, but what if we do not have this object at all, at all with us, then it will complain. But with optional chaining, what I can do is that, well, if object.system does not exist, then do not execute this thing. If the object system user does not exist, then do not execute this thing and it's safe. And once you do that, we get undefined, right? And I can just, you know, say that object doesn't exist, just anything like that. So if I have the object now with me, name Mehul, and it's safe, you're gonna see, oops, we need system as well. And you're going to see that we get mayhole right here. Now, if I do not have this user again, because we are checking for user as well. So it would just say me object does not exist. However, if I had something like this, you see that the user property is not here now. And I'm trying to access a property named dot name on undefined. So this would complain again, right? So that does, this does not mean that it will apply automatically down the chain as well. You have to manually apply it on every property. Okay, so this is optional chaining syntax. Now, there's another thing known as the nullish coalescent syntax. And what that is, is basically very close to how the or works in JavaScript, just like we did. But instead of these two pipes, we're gonna do a two question marks and it's safe. And it'll pretty much remain the same. Now, what's the difference? Well, we see that in JavaScript, what happens is if I have values like zero, these are considered as uh, null values, right? Zero is uh, falsy, and you can see that we get zero is falsy, right? Similarly, empty string, empty string is falsy. Empty string is also considered falsy. But a lot of times, these are the valid values which you know are valid for your input. So in those cases where you do not want these values to just rule out, 
what we have is a knowledge coalescing operator. Now what happens in this is if I have zero or something, you see I get zero out of this, right? On the other hand, if I had the OR operator, I would get something out of this, right? For similarly, for an empty string or, you know, something, I'll get an empty string because it's not null, right? However, for null or five, I'll get five. Similarly, for null or, you know, 100, I'll get 100 because this is null, nullish value, so I get 100. Undefined or five gives me five and undefined or five gives me five as well because nullish coalescing operator would remove values which are nullish like, right? So which are actually falsy values, not, not some real values. So false or five would give me false again because false is actually a boolean value it's not nullish and similarly let me think true or five obviously again true how about not a number not a number or 10 gives me not a number this is because again this is not a nullish value so undefined and nullish that is null itself are the nullish values right so this is how it would work similarly when the features get shipped in browsers this would directly work in javascript so for now it would not work directly but you know because i'm running canary version of chrome so this is already available for me so you can see that i can just go ahead and you know go down the tree as much as what i want and to abc something like this i can do this but i can see that the object is empty however if i go ahead and define this ghi abc and let's say this is five right so there we are now if i run this you see we get five right so if if i run a property which is not available again i get undefined because here's where the uh, undefined value was returned so yeah that's pretty much it for this video if you liked it don't forget to subscribe thank you for watching and i'll see you then in the next one.